guys and welcome back to my channel. Since you guys know that I work in the luxury resale industry, um, I come in contact with people when they are in, when they have decided that a bag is no longer for them and they're ready to sell it. Most of the time, what happens when someone decides a bag is no longer for them, they prop it probably would have been better for them if they wouldn't have purchased the bag in the first place, um, especially when it comes to the resale market with certain types of bags that don't necessarily hold their value very well. I did a video about this many months ago. Uh, please check it out up here. So in today's video, we're talking about 10 reasons not to buy a bag. First and foremost, we're gonna get this out of the way fast because it's super obvious. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. If you can't afford it, if you can't afford it, um, I'll speak for myself. I so badly, more than anything, want to get a caviar single flat maxi with silver hardware, Chanel, and also a medium Chanel as well. Both of those are, both of those even pre-loved, even with payment plans, even with discounts, go way above and beyond what my budget is at the moment. That is something I cannot justify purchasing, therefore I will not be buying either of those bags anytime soon. All these luxury goods are really fun to purchase and you guys know how much I love all the bags that I have in my collection. Ultimately, your responsibilities are more important than buying a handbag and that is something that I have to start with. I have to make sure that we never lose sight of on this channel. Make responsible choices. <laughs> Now that we got that out of the way, the next one is that it doesn't fit your lifestyle. Um, if you are not someone who is who is going to like fancy gala evening things all the time, then does it really make sense to spend, let's say, does it really make sense to spend two thousand dollars on an evening clutch? Probably not. <laughs> Make sure that every bag that you bring into your collection is going to be something you're going to use to the fullest capacity. Um, that doesn't mean to say that every bag has to be an everyday bag um, necessarily, but just do have a plan to use. Do have a plan when you are picking out handbags to purchase and do go in knowing that this is going to be something that will be on steady, regular rotation um, throughout your lifestyle. The next thing, this is for after you've bought something, so this may be something to take into account when uh, during your return window if you have one. It is very rarely the case that you end up loving something more than the first day that you buy it, especially if it's something that was on it, that has been on your wish list for a long time. So if you are already having second thoughts and reservations on it after you've taken it home, definitely do give it some time. Give it some time before you decide to use it and before it is like, you know, married to your collection and be sure to keep an eye on your return window just in case maybe it isn't the item for you. Also along that point, um, is there something you love about it but, or is there anything really like significant that you would change about the bag? Um, if there's just like little, Little but little but significant tweaks that would make you enjoy the bag more. Really consider if this is something that's gonna work for your lifestyle. The next one is if a bag is too heavy. Um, that is definitely a reason to put it back on the shelf. Just remember if the bag itself is heavy, especially if it's a larger size bag, it is only going to get heavier. Now, I have two of my most favorite bags in my entire collection right here. My Balenciaga Ladis and my Gucci Dionysus. Both of these bags have absolutely nothing inside of them besides maybe air paper in their dust bag, and they are definitely each a good like three, three to four pounds heavy. Uh, these are my probably two favorite, favorite bags in my entire collection, so they do have that like swoon factor going, uh, which is why in my mind I can justify it, justify them every time that I purchase. However, not every bag is gonna do it for you like that, and just remember that you have to actually enjoy your life um, enjoy your life when you are carrying your bags, especially if you have any type of shoulder injuries or anything like that. It's just, our lives are complicated enough, we don't have to make discomfort a factor in them as well. So that's something definitely to bear in mind. While I love those two bags and I carry them all the time, um, just I do fully recognize that they are heavy as hell. The next one is because it's on sale. Is it the price that's drawing you in? You look at the normal price on this item, is it, would you be considering it at that price? Something to take into account. Now, yes, of course, I am by nature a bargain shopper. I r rarely ever buy anything full price. Everything I do buy is on sale, but is on sale pre-loved discounted in some way? Um, but just know that if you're buying something in the seasonal sales, then it may be because it's just like a weird color. Just remember 
you're not saving money buying things that you don't need. So the next one is if you bring it home and you're already thinking about potential resale value. Now for me, you guys know on this channel, we do not view luxury goods as reliable financial investments. Buying this Gucci bag was not a you know replacement for a savings account. Remember this, if you buy something and you are already thinking about potential resale value in the future, I recommend just moving along to the next thing. I don't believe that you should have contingencies when you bring a handbag home. Either you love it or you don't. Point blank, especially, especially in the beginning. Um, now, yes, of course, over time, you may realize that something doesn't work out for you and there isn't really a lot you can't that, it, that you can do about that. So once again, um, when you do resell handbags, expect to take some sort of a loss. And for me, it's better to just if you're going to lose the money anyway, you might as well hold on to it and buy something that you will not end up selling. Reason not to buy something. If you're seeing it right now all over Instagram, we've all fallen for it. We've all done it. I know, I, I understand. However, if, you're see if you think you're seeing it everywhere and everywhere really just entails your YouTube uh, newsfeed as well as your Instagram, Instagram feed, then just do bear in mind that there are certain designers out there that are using social media influencers as, as a marketing strategy specifically for their new releases. Um, that's not to say that the influencers that you love and you follow don't love their new bag that was gifted to them, but just know that the large push isn't necessarily as organic as you may otherwise think. So when you do see, quote, see a bag everywhere, is it in person? Is it in your real life? Or is it really only contained on your Instagram? Just remember that when you are, you know, drooling over the newest craze in handbags. For example, um, I am not a huge fan of this particular marketing strategy. However, I will say I am loving the new Dior bag. I, I can't remember what the name of it is, but I do think that it is a great bag and it's really well designed. Or it is something that I'm considering adding to my wish list, but I want to see, at, I personally am going to wait until the hype around it subsides before I decide to, whether or not I'm going to take the plunge. The fact that I know that it is like the big, the, the big new thing in the, uh, in the handbag world, that's the trend that they're trying to push out. I'm just going to wait it out and see if I still love it this time next year. You're out shopping, you see a bag or a pair of shoes, and you immediately start dreaming up outfits that you're going to wear with it, events coming up in your life that you'll be able to incorporate this item into. Um, but be realistic about your lifestyle. And once you start dreaming up like phantom events that don't actually happen for you in order to justify a purchase of a handbag, it may be time to walk away. For example, um, in a recent haul video that I did, I just found a, I found a, a comment that someone made it's really, really funny. Um, there was this one white frilly dress that I got. I think it was, I think it was from Amazon, and it was really cute, but it just really didn't suit me for some reason. I thought it was like a little too like frilly and feminine or, or girly or whatever, and maybe a bit too young. And someone left a comment saying that it would be great for a garden party. And I, shout out to you, I just, I thought the comment was hilarious. That's exactly how I knew that I had to send it back. I've never been to a garden party and I don't foresee myself getting invited to one anytime soon. Uh, so if that is the perfect, the perfect dress for a garden party, then maybe it should go back to the store. Um, so yes, inventing elaborate scenarios where you'll be able to incorporate this piece and not being able to imagine like regular days in your life Maybe that's a reason to not buy something. So the next one is that it requires extra pieces in order to make it work. So if you love it, but it needs a shoulder strap. If you love it, but you have to get a bag organizer. This item is gonna require extra pieces in order to work for your lifestyle. Um, if that's the case, then maybe just find something something else that will work on its own. Um, now, yes, of course, I am sort of the queen of rigging things to work for me. Um, I have removed straps on bags and purchased other ones. I have, um, you know, bought um, purse organizers, so I have a bit more organization and extra pockets. I am definitely a fan of doing all of that, but uh, under the, the underlying reason why those items stayed in my collection was because they were practical on their own merit, with the exception of my giant shopper tote. Yes, 
that bag I would never carry without the organizer, but that's pretty normal for a tote of that size. So th that one is an outlier, but just do take the point that if it needs all of this extra help, then maybe you need a different bag. And the last one is, do you have something else like it sitting in your closet? Do you have a closet full of bags just like this one at home? Now I get it, everyone has their personal style. Me, I think I have an affinity for the top handle tote with a shoulder strap. That's sort of something that I have represented a lot in my closet in many different sizes. However, I do find that of all of my bags, everyone brings a different like piece to the table and I don't find that there's a lot of redundancy necessarily in my collection of bags that are along the same shape. I hope that makes sense. But yes, I am not of the mind that you really need to have the same bag in three colors. I'm not a trifecta person um, because I feel like bags, especially at the price points that they are, should be able um, to be used more versatile, should be more versatile in their use. If you have something that's the same color, the same shape, the same size, the same style, um, I generally tend to think that it should be one over the other. Um, I don't necessarily want to have a closet full of a hundred different handbags ever in my life, um, but everyone's different. <laughs> I don't know if that was 10, that might have been more than 10, but those are my reasons to not buy a bag. Sometimes, even though here we do shopping tips, this is not shopping tips, basically. Um, at the moment I have 14 handbags and they all represent a different aspect or area of my life. And that's sort of where I want to keep it for, for the time being. So anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any thoughts or any other reasons why you would not buy a bag, then please comment them down below. I would love to hear them. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And that's all I got. So I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.